First is to be aware of your risk tolerance. And the second is to be aware of your time horizon. All right, joining me, of course, is Guy Turner from Coin Bureau, one of the biggest crypto YouTubers in the world. And we're really excited to have him join us at the Bigot Empower X Summit. Guy, please share with our audience a little bit about yourself, your background. We love to hear it. Thanks, man. Um, yes, yeah, so my name's Guy. I uh, co-founded Coin Bureau. Um, we started as a uh, we started as a website. We just had written content about crypto. I discovered Bitcoin in 2013. I went to a, a pub near where I lived in London, and they took they accepted Bitcoin behind the bar, and I was fascinated from that moment on. But yeah, so we start. I started researching it, started writing about it, and then Coin Bureau kind of grew out of that. And then we uh, we transitioned to a YouTube channel, sort of 2018, 2019. And yeah, we uh, we just kind of kept going with it. We always tried to be neutral in our coverage whenever we covered a project. We always said what we liked about it. We always said what we didn't like about it. And we tried to, you know, our our aim was to be a place where you could go and get unbiased crypto knowledge. So those are that you know we've always worked along those sentiments uh, you know with those sentiments in mind ever since, and you know have kind of grown and grown over that time, and obviously we have you know we have projects that we like more than others, but I like to think that we still have that kind of neutral approach to the industry. We always try to look at things on their on their merits, um, but see both sides of the argument. In more in the last couple of years, we've also sort of started focusing a bit more on the macro side of things as well, because crypto as an asset class has grown so much. It's become, it's still a very niche thing in the grand scheme of things. But whereas before it was tiny, only a few people knew about it. Now, with every year that goes past, whether it's a bullish or, or bearish year, this, the industry is maturing, the sector is growing, and it's becoming more and more entwined with the global financial system, for better and for worse. So that was that was one of the big reasons why we decided to kind of f focus more coverage on macro uh, stuff as well. So we talk about what the what the Fed is doing, for instance, because that has a direct effect on the crypto market. We talk about maybe what's happening with the Chinese property market, because that will you know that will ripple out through the rest of the system. That will have an effect on risk assets and crypto. So I think that's one of the reasons why we've been able to kind of keep growing over these years, uh, because we talk about crypto, but also stuff that is relevant to crypto to try and give people that sort of big picture view on, on what this amazing industry is all about and, and the, the internal factors that drive it, but the external factors that affect it as well. Absolutely right. And I can attest to that. I know you guys definitely provide unbiased, data-driven content. I, and one of the things that when you brought up macro, I remember watching one of your videos about the Chinese real estate market. I mean, you're a crypto channel, but then you talk about Chinese real estate because they actually, a lot of it goes hand in hand because a lot of the Chinese investors are in crypto. They're affected by the real estate market. And so looking at that is, I think, very, very important. So it's amazing that you're, you're able to provide such a bias and, and data backed type content. And we really like that. So we're really happy to be able to, to invite you and, and you know, Share your thoughts with us. Absolutely love that. Uh, and so my next question, I wanted to maybe shift gears a little bit more on um, a personal note. What is What has been your biggest lesson that you've learned in your crypto journey so far? Gosh, there's been, there's been a few of them. Um, I think probably the thing, that, the thing that most readily springs to mind is to ask more questions, is to always try and dig deeper. When I started this, when I started doing this, I, I tended to be someone who took things very much at face value. And as I researched crypto more and more and got kind of more into it, I realized that I had to, I had to be more willing to challenge my assumptions. And I kind of feel that I did do that. But then we got other people on board with the team, like we got other people to join our research department, some amazingly perceptive and, and bright people. And through working with them, I learned to challenge it even more because they, you know, some of them will literally not believe anything that they read. <laughs> it's crazy. But I still think it's it's possible to become a little bit complacent over time. I think even though I like to I you know, I think the essence of wisdom is knowing how how little you actually know. But I still think you 
you can sort of slip into a mindset where you're like, oh, I've been in crypto for a few years now. I kind of think I know this. And crypto is one of those crazy industries. It's why I love it so much, or one of the many reasons I love it so much. But it does it it doesn't behave the way you expect it to. So I think my biggest probably my you know the thing that I would if I could change, I'd go back. It would be to ask more questions. It would be to to go, is this is this what I think it is? Is this as good as it? Is this person who I think they are? And you, you know, you can. There are plenty of people in the crypto industry over the last year or so. We've seen that people, us included, should have been asking more questions, should have dug deeper, and that's what I. That's my lesson. So, you know, I hope that from this point on, going forward, there'll always be another layer to sort of scrape away. I Be love that. That is a fantastic answer. I think to our audience watching, it's definitely very important to stay disciplined and always dig deep, try to find all the information you can as much as possible. Love that. So of course, Coin Bureau, like I said, is one of the biggest, most successful crypto channels out there. I wanted to ask, what is the one thing you're most proud of so far in your crypto journey? Most proud of? Um, a lot. I, I, you know, I love the fact that, I mean, I love the fact that people watch us and, you know, and and use us as a source of information and I hopefully inspired by us. So I think two things that particularly stand out. One is that the, the number of people who've come up to me and said, oh, I've been a subscriber of yours for however long. Um, you inspired me or your channel inspired me to, to move into crypto or to, to move into Web3. I've spoken to like TradFi people, you know, bankers, brokers. I've spoken to lawyers, I've spoken to people in so many different professions and who have said like, yeah, you your channel inspired me to sort of move into Web3 and now I'm doing this and I'm building this. So I feel, I feel really, really proud of that. I also feel kind of like we're a pretty small enterprise coin bureau. There's about sort of, it's about kind of 15 of us. So we're not that, we're not huge, like, and we're kind of spread, uh, we're the, most of us are concentrated in Dubai, but we have got people working remotely across Europe and elsewhere. And I'm proud that the business that my co-founders and I started all those years ago now employs those people. Like, it's not just, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to say it properly, but I guess, you know, it, 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 we're a functioning business. Do you know what I mean? It's like because I think when we started out, it was, it was, it's kind of hard to take the idea of a YouTube channel seriously because it's sort of like, you know, how do you? And then you know, you gradually sort of learn how it all works. But it's like, yeah, we're a, you know, we're a business that employs people. We're not that many, and I hope we, I hope as we grow, we can employ more and more and become bigger. Obviously, but. Even even the people that we do employ, I feel very I feel very proud about that. You know, I think, and they seem to they seem to love the work, and it, that feels very fulfilling because I was never the sort of guy who imagined that I would you know co-found a business or start a business that employed other people. I was kind of used to just doing my own thing or maybe with a small group. So that I like I like that fact. My next question for you is: if you had just one advice, one tip you can share with, say, a beginner investor or a trader. One tip that could immensely benefit him for the next two years, prepare for the next cycle. What would that be? Okay, I think it would be. I think it would come in two parts. I think the first is to be aware of your risk tolerance, and the second is to be aware of your time horizon. So, risk tolerance, like crypto, is crypto investing is not for the faint-hearted, as you as you know, as anyone watching this will know. But there are people who can quite happily sink a thousand dollars into a coin or token into Bitcoin perhaps or anything else and and see that $1,000 go down by 50% or more. Now, there are, there are people who can see that happen and go, I am, I'm in this for the long haul, which is where the time horizon comes in. I'm in this for the long haul. I can do this. I believe in this asset and in this asset class. So I can, I can deal with that. And those sorts of people, those, you know, they'll, be, they'll be okay with it. Other sorts of people put a thousand pounds into Bitcoin or whatever and see it go, you know, see a, a zero shaved off that. That isn't so that isn't so easy. And different people have different tolerance. So you have to ask yourself that. You have, are you prepared to see your investment perhaps well, for, I mean go to zero, but are you prepared to to see it go down and to hold on, you know, to hodl? And like hodling is that, that idea, you know, that word gets thrown around a lot, but it is a mentality and it's important to have because not everyone can do it. So, um, and it's, 
that goes for any sort of investing, you know. What, and what is your time horizon? Are you are you investing because you want to get enough money for a deposit for a house in a year, or is your time horizon two years? Are you investing for your future, for your kids' future? Are you trying to buy a new car? You know, what are you what are you trying to do? Um, and again, like crypto can be good for the person with a very short time horizon, but it's much, much trickier. So I, I mean, I'm a long time horizon sort of guy. I try to look five, 10, 15 years in the future. And I think it's, I think your life will be easier if you're able to do that. But if you know your risk tolerance and you know your time horizon and you're comfortable with that, then you can do well. It's the people who go, actually, I didn't realize that I could, I couldn't watch something go almost to zero. I didn't, I didn't know that about myself. So ask yourself those questions before you, before you jump in. And that goes for anything like crypto. And I love that. I, I, I strongly, strongly agree with you. I think having a long time horizon is really the only surefire way to find success in crypto. A lot of people, they think too short term and they end up getting burned. They think the industry is a scam or whatever, but I think you just have to look out long enough and really research enough to believe in the space to go, to go all in. And I think that could be where success may lie for a lot of people. So yeah, yeah, I think crypto like certain part certain elements of the crypto industry, I mean, crypto Twitter, for example, kind of tends to often foster a sort of short term attitude. It's like, look, here's the prevailing narrative, get in on this, you can flip it, it'll 10 x overnight or whatever. That does happen. And that is why a lot of people got involved. It still happens even in a bear market, It's just much, much harder to spot. So that is possible, but like I think a lot of people think they can be a trader, think they've got a short time horizon, and they can deal with it. Most people I don't think are. I don't, you know, most people don't have time. So it's it's important. It's important to know yourself. Absolutely, couldn't agree more. Love that. What would you like to say to Bitget on its fifth year anniversary? Wow. Yes. It, is it today? Well, or about? About. <laughs> first of all, first of all, I'd like to say happy birthday, Bitget. Um, I think also, yeah, this has been a, a tough year for exchanges. It's been a tough few years for exchanges. And the crypto exchange landscape is so different now to what it was a few years ago. And it has changed for the better. But there are still a lot of obstacles in the way. And I think people are looking to exchanges to lead the way. Because obviously, you know, you go back to something like Mt. Gox that destroyed so much of the trust in crypto and like, you know, I know we say you don't want to trust, but you have to you have to have you have to trust at some point. And I think for BitGet and for, for other exchanges like you, it trust takes trust takes years to build up and seconds to destroy. So I think as long as BitGet keeps that idea of like everything has to be everything has to be done properly and they are, uh, you know, they are leading the field in what people look to. You know, that responsibility that they have as an exchange, then, uh, yeah, I think they need to keep that keep that in mind. They've done it so far. I don't see any reason why they won't continue to do that. But I think it, it always pays to be reminded of that because, you know, it is a big thing. People are trusting you with their money, even though they shouldn't keep their coins and tokens on exchanges. Absolutely right. OK, I just have a few more questions for you. Mm -hmm. What do you think will be the biggest trend in crypto in the next five years? I think there are loads that uh, loads that could uh, break out. I think four that I'm sort of watching particularly closely, GameFi, because I think there's already a huge market for that. I've had some fascinating conversations with people out there um, about, you know, how gameplay has to come first. If they start building playable games with blockchain and crypto integrated coming second after gameplay, then GameFi could be huge. I think um, real world assets the tokenization of real world assets, you know, if you talk, if you look at any of these kind of mega banks, any of these big financial guys on Wall Street and elsewhere, there is so much talk of that being, you know, a trillion dollar industry. Now, what form exactly that takes is is harder to know. You know, but that could be I mean, we could probably be looking to layer ones and, you know, Ethereum layer twos for that. But real world asset tokenization is going to be massive. So that's another uh, that's another potential sector. Um, I think stable coins it's the least glamorous sector <laughs> you don't you don't usually get big ups and downs but stable coins is stable coins are fantastically innovative technology aren't they they're amazing like, when you think about it and they are in many ways the lifeblood of crypto and i think there is still a lot to explore with those so i think stable coins is one to watch 
you're not going to make huge money on price swings. But again, the underlying protocols, the layer ones that these that these stable coins run on. Uh, and the final sector that I think is fascinating is DSO, decentralized social media. Um, Again, this is something like a decentralized stablecoin that actually works. If we, if the industry can get this right, if we can come up with a, a decentralized social media protocol that is, is truly decentralized, then I think the, the potential for that is huge because people, even people who don't know about crypto, even people who don't care about things like decentralization can look at the likes of Facebook. They can look at the likes of Twitter or X or whatever it's called now. You know, and see what people like Mark see the influence that people like Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk have, for better or worse, and they can appreciate just how you know how dated those models are. These huge data farms that are centrally controlled, extremely vulnerable, extremely vulnerable to, to regulation, extremely vulnerable to the whims of billionaire owners. And I think people, if we can if we can present people with a decentralized social media protocol that can't be censored, that can't be taken offline, that can't be controlled, um, but yet still offers you know, protection for users, still offers a good environment for people to, to interact, that could be massive. So yeah, it's a big like job. I know it's being worked on, um, but if they can get it right, sky's the limit. Could be huge. Yeah, wow, those are be. some fantastic sectors and innovative ideas that you're talking about. Actually, some of them we didn't even hear today. So thank you for sharing. Those are some great insights. My pleasure. My next one is a, a little different in the sense that where do you think crypto will be in five years? Maybe in mass adoption or anything else that you think yeah. you know, is related? I mean, let's face it, if crypto continues following the sort of cycles that it has, um, then we could see, you know, we could be in the, you know, on the cusp of another big bull market. We could be in another in another massive dip. Um, I think crypto will continue along that stage. I think at some point, and I know people like Simon Dixon have said this um, and said it very articulately. At some point, I think crypto could get a bit boring from a price action point of view. I think eventually the days of, you know, 100x altcoins, you know, meme coins and stuff, I think eventually as the sector matures, as it integrates more with the existing financial system, which is not necessarily something I'm all that keen on. I think crypto, crypto was developed, Bitcoin was invented to be outside of the existing financial system. And I don't think it's a good thing that TradFi is looking to absorb crypto. And this is what mega banks and big asset managers, that's what they want to do. They want to make it part of the TradFi system that they already control. So I think there's, I think there's gonna be a big battle ahead. Can crypto maintain any aspect of its independence or is it gonna get swallowed by TradFi? Now I can't, I can't say for sure, but I wonder whether we will end up with a slightly two tier system. We'll end up with a sort of crypto that's been captured by the li likes of asset managers and mega banks and is almost indistinguishable from the rest of the financial system and a more independent ecosystem that, is, that has Im truly embraced decentralization that has gone, no, we don't want, we don't want to be part of an ETF. We don't want a, an ETF for our coin or token. We don't want to interact with TradFi. I think that would be, probably be a best case scenario. Like, I, I, don't think, I don't think crypto can entirely remain independent. I think TradFi is too powerful in that respect. My hope is that we will see at least an independent sector that allows people to, to stick to that ethos of crypto, which is financial freedom. Financial freedom is not about having enough money to do whatever the hell you want. Financial freedom is about having money and assets that you control. And no one else can tell you, no one can take them away from you. No one can requisition them. No one can freeze your account. So I hope that we, that we see that, that, that dual system because I think that's the best that we can hope for. I hope so too. Those are some very interesting thoughts that you brought up there. And I, I agree with you. I hope the future will go in that direction. It'll be really interesting to see what happens. Now, my next question uh, is, is more on a personal note. I, we hope to ask this because we want to show our audience that even the most successful people are still human, you know, go through successes and failures. Mm -hmm. So my next question for you is, what is the one token you've either, if you're comfortable sharing, that mm -hmm. you've uh, made the most or lost the most money? Wow. Um, <laughs> I mean, I guess, I guess in a way, Bitcoin, because I, I made 
I made a fair bit of money on Bitcoin. I bought, you know, when I bought some in, well, I started buying, although I discovered it in 2013, I didn't actually buy any until 2014. And I made a bit of money on that. I didn't buy a huge amount because I didn't have much, you know, I didn't have much spare cash to spend on it. But, uh, you know, I made, it, I made good on that Bitcoin, but I sold it. Not all of it, but I sold some of it. Um, so, and, you know, I was like everyone else. I was looking at it go, put 50K and then eventually 69K going, if I'd held on to that, I'd have made a lot more than I did. But, you know, I, I'm, in a way, I'm kind of glad that I did. I wish, I'd, I wish I hadn't sold quite as much Bitcoin as I had. But you learn by doing. And so even though I took, you know, even though you could say I took an L on some of the Bitcoin that I sold, I learned a lot. So that was that was good enough for me. But profit is also profit. So profit is profit. Yeah. And a lot of people forget that, like taking profits is important. You know, this idea it's so many people, you'll see so many people confessing on Twitter or you'll talk to so many people go, I bought this when it was like X cents and then I rode it up to fifty dollars and I rode it all the way down again. So I, that, yeah, it happens. But try, try not to be that person. Don't be someone. Don't be someone else's exit liquidity. Absolutely, couldn't agree more. Okay, the last few, just a fireside. You know, uh, if you had to hodl for two years, mm -hmm. what would you choose, Bitcoin or ETH? Uh, hodl for two years, uh, ETH. ETH. Yeah. Okay. Meme coins or NFTs? NFTs. NFTs. Great. Last one, Doge or Sheeb? <laughs> <laughs> Doge. Doge, Doge, proof of work, proof Good of man. work, Good right, man. yeah. Okay, yeah. all right, that about concludes our little chat today. Guys, thank you so much for taking the time, we really appreciate it. My pleasure. We, we love hearing your thoughts, I mean, you like I said, it's all data-driven, unbiased information that you provide for us, so we're very, very happy to have you here, and please keep doing what you're doing, and we wish you all the best. I will, CH, thank you for having me, and Fantastic. don't worry, it's, we're, we're still going. I love that, <laughs> all right, thanks guys.